Well, let me give you a quick preview of what we are getting to on Thursday. And um, I want to explain a little bit of language that I'm going to be using while we are in special relativity. It's a shorthand to avoid having to do a lot of tedious um, tedious clarification over and over. <laughs> it's the use of one special vocabulary, observation. So I, I mean, in everyday English, the word see and observe means the same thing. You observe what you see. Um, but I'm going to uh, reserve this word observation in special relativity to mean th something that's entirely different from seeing. Um, so let me put it this way. How many of you here know, have some sense of how far away stars are? <laughs> really far away, <laughs> right? Um, what's the, do you know what the closest star that's not our sun is? How far away it is? No, it's not that far. In terms of light years, actually, actually, it's actually pretty close. It's a light years are a very reasonable unit of measurement for astronomical things. Alpha Centauri, how far away is it? No one has them memorized. No one here is an astronomy major. <laughs> I think 3.4, some like three or four light years away. So uh, let me introduce a diagram that I'm going to be leaning on a lot, especially as we introduce the tools we are going to introduce on Thursday. And um, let me try to explain this distinction between seeing and observing in special, the way I'm using the word, in special relativity. I'm actually borrowing this from a popular upper division textbook author, Griffith. He wrote a textbook for, um, I guess, art majors um, called Revolutions in 20th Century Physics that actually explains conceptual ideas even better than a lot of um, more rigorous textbooks do. And so this is the distinction between um, observing and seeing. And once again, I'm just uh, trying to clarify the uh, new strange definition I'm going to be using. It's a shorthand so that I don't have to keep reminding you that we have to make this correction every single time. So I'm going to, uh, let me describe this distinction using something called the space-time diagram. So in space-time diagram, what you do is you illustrate um, motion in uh, one-dimensional, so if you're drawing this in two dimensions, motion has to be one-dimensional motion and um, passage of time in its own axis. So you do, uh, plus something with an axis like this. Um, the position along the horizontal axis, <laughs> trying to remember the conventions. Uh, time along the, um, time along the, the vertical axis. Yep. So let me ask you this uh, somewhat inane question. Um, can, so imagine this, it's night, so you can see the night sky and Alpha Centauri. I don't know what constellation that's in. Let me, um, so it's winter, so you can, when it's at night, you can see the winter triangle. There's a Sirius, uh, which is one of the brighter stars. Let's just say Sirius is, I don't know, 10 light years away. I don't know the exact number. Um, so let me ask you this question. Can you, um, let's see. Um, two separate questions. One, is it possible to see light emitted from Sirius right now? Why not? Because the light needs time to travel. Light needs time to travel. A different question is, can you observe light emitted by Sirius right now? And I'll tell you the answer is yes, with a very convoluted definition of the phrase observe. So let me um, illustrate it on this diagram here. So on the space-time diagram, this is how you might illustrate sort of um, Earth, Sirius, and light from Sirius, all that stuff. So let's say this is where Earth is. And I can actually plot the trajectory of Earth on this uh, space-time diagram. Uh, I'm going to use Earth's frame, 
which means Earth starts at position x equals 0, and it remains at position x equals 0 for all time, meaning it'll just stay here. It's kind of boring. Yeah? Yes? And for the sake of this discussion, let's say Sirius is at relative, um, like stationary, velo like relative velocity between Earth and Sirius is 0, which I'm pretty sure is not true, but <laughs> let's just say it is. Um, so Sirius is out here at 10 light years away. Yeah? And the trajectory of Sirius would look like this. And these are all the different moments in time for Sirius. So when I talk about light emitted by Sirius, it would be, well, this light here. Light being emitted at this moment right now, simultaneous with the, when I say the word phrase right now. And it takes light, uh, time for this light to travel. It'll take this light 10 years to get to us. So it'll take this light 10 years to get to us. So this is our 10-year mark the light will finally reach us and we'll be able to see it. So now, 10 years from now, when we finally see that light, will our astronomers think that that light from Sirius, that's what's going on with the Sirius star right now? No, our astronomers are not stupid. They are smart. They know how to correct for the travel time of light. And this is uh, uh, the sense in which I'm always going to use the word observe. When I say the word observe, we have already corrected for this trouble time of light. Because, you know, I don't want to, I want to assume that our observers A and B, our observers A and B, I want to assume that they are smart. They know how to make these trivial adjustments, right? Like, every, like all of you are smart, you know how to make that adjustment. And I'm making the same assumption for A and B. They know how to make those adjustments. So when our astronomers see the light from Sirius 10 years from now, they know that that's the light that was emitted right now, not you know, 10 years later. So, so that's why I can say, so you know, when I say observe the light right now, no, it, it does have to wait 10 years for me to actually make that observation, draw that reconstructed picture. So, so that's the sense in which we are going to use the word observe. And here's really the reason I'm going through all this painstaking detail to distinguishing between these two. I want to draw attention to how I phrased these two phrases. Moving clocks are slow. Moving rulers are slow, uh, short. I didn't say moving clocks appear slow. No, moving clocks are actually slow. This is how we observe moving clocks. We have made all the trivial adjustments that can be made. After having done all of that, there's a real physical effect remaining, meaning moving clocks are slow. And the same thing with the rulers. Uh, uh, actually, with the moving clocks, it's kind of easy. If you, are, if you work in particle physics, this kind of thing happens all the time in particle accelerators. Like uh, particles with a really short lifetime live a lot longer as they are kept in the synchrotrons. So this is kind of um, trivial matter now. Moving rulers are harder. We don't have any spaceships that move at relativistic speeds. Um, but I'm still claiming that moving rulers don't appear short. They are actually short. So we have corrected for any trivial effect from the travel time of light. After having done all that, these are the real effects that remain. So, um, so when I, whenever I say the word observe, that's what I want you to understand, that we have made, uh, already made those uh, trivial adjustments. And whatever remains is the, I don't know, property of the, um, the universe we live in, space time we live in. It's the actual real property of the nature. It's not just uh, some artifact of, oh, it takes light time to travel. And, um, Still have 10 minutes. Maybe I'll just stand early. <laughs> um, so, oh, I guess I can write down Lorentz transformation. Um, so, one other thing I want to note is even though we are going to be using light to illustrate a lot of these things, none of the special relativity is actually specific to light. It's the property of the space time itself. So, gravitational waves, which you recently heard got detected, uh, also travels at speed of light because gravitational waves also move through space. Um, when we get to, wait, 
maybe when we get to quantum mechanics, essentially any particle with a zero mass will sp travel the speed of light. So, uh, yeah, sorry, that's a little bit too far ahead. Um, so, but, so even though we are using light as an example, because it's a convenient example, um, what we are talking about is the property of the, uh, the universe itself, not any particular one example. 